I believe in you and in your creativity and in your ability to actually create a daily creative practice. Absolutely, I believe in that. And that's what we're here to do this year, all 366 days of it. And this, I believe, is day six. And yesterday, I made a little video that was talking about the new thing I have discovered that I want to to bring to you. And it's called Imperfectionist's Art Movement. Now, it's not about making crappy art or bad art or, you know, that kind of art that isn't always good. But it is a little bit about just letting go of perfectionist tendencies or letting go of that negative self-talk that's inside of you that says you're not good enough or you didn't, you didn't take enough classes or you didn't study art or you can't make things like the other artists you see out there on Pinterest and Instagram. Let's let's let all that go. I want you to figure out this year how you can get in to your creative space and you can let your creative soul fly, whatever that means and whatever that takes. Because there's really no such thing as bad art. There is all kinds of art out there, and there's room in the world for every bit of expression. So this is more about the process and the expression this year, the intuitivity, um, which is at the corner of creativity and intuition. I've done that for years, so I just want to talk a little bit about that today before we get started. Thanks for putting up with it. Uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit about gesso. Gesso is really like a primer. If you've ever painted your walls and used a primer or painted a piece of furniture, you generally have to prime it. And now they're even making primer for your makeup <laughs> routine. So whatever that means, primer is just preparing one surface to connect with or adhere to another kind of medium. And that's what gesso is for us. And along the way this year, I'm gonna I've I've divided this up into three three uh, parts. I call it my three T's. And the first one is time. Second one is treasure or money or dollars spent. And the third is talent. So we've talked a little bit about how to game our time. That means getting into the studio 20 minutes a day, setting a timer. That's our game that we are actually playing with each other this year. And the second part of that is your treasure or your money. And so we want to tame that part of it. And to tame that, I'm going to give you a whole lot of hacks this year that you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on. Gesso is another proposition. It's one of those things that you really do have to spend money on. And you want to get the best that you can afford. And there's all kinds of brands out there. These just happen to be my favorites. Uh, but you can certainly get other brands. So let's talk a little bit. Gesso comes in white. It comes in black. It comes in a sandable version. And it also comes in a transparent or clear version. So why would we use different things for different places? In a, in a altered book or a junk journal, whatever that is, it really doesn't make a difference which one you use, just as long as you use one. Because we don't want we don't want the pages to absorb through each other. So that helps prevent that. And we're going to be doing a lot of things on the page so it makes it a little more stable also. So gessos are an acrylic liquid that um it just prepares the support for other mediums. I'm trying to read on the surface here. For a adhesion, it says, with acrylics and or oil paints. So this gesso, even though it's acrylic, you can paint over it with oil products like oil pastels, oil paint, whatever. 
Um, the sandable kind means that. It just gives a surface that you can actually sand and abrade if you need to do that. We don't have to do that very often in a book, but that's just so you know what it is. Clear, that's definitely a place to use that is if you want the words on your page of a book to show through or you you have layers and you don't want to cover up those layers with gesso, then you would use this transparent base, uh, clear gesso at that point in time. So let me kind of move these out of the way. I'm going to just use white gesso today. And I use, when I'm using gesso, I tend to use a... Um, an old artist brush. I don't tend to use my good ones. I have a I have a gesso brush that I keep just for that. Let me unclip that. And that's a good thing to have. These I just picked up at the dollar store. These nice clips that help hold the pages down when I am working on them. So you just dip your brush. You don't need a whole lot. And you just brush it over all of the surfaces. Use enough to cover it up. And you don't want to dilute this or water it down. You want to keep it just straight out of the jar as it is. And make sure you get all surfaces unless there's a word or something you do not want to cover up. You can certainly do that. And I'm going to put a little bit less on there. And I'm going to show you I've already primed this side. There was, looks like I was eating chocolate or something on that page. Looks like there's a piece of chocolate on there. Gives me, gives me more interest, doesn't it? On this page, I hope you can see it. Now let me hold it a little bit closer to the camera. The top of the page just had one coat. The bottom of the page, I put two coats on. So you can see this is a little um, a little more opaque than the top where I used one. One is sufficient for the adhesion properties of gesso. One is certainly enough. You don't need more than one. But if you really want to cover something up, you can use more than one, but I think gesso is the wrong way to go about that. I think if you get yourself a really good titanium white paint and use it after your gesso, use that for your making the opacity go away, if that makes sense, because that's a little bit, a little bit less expensive than trying to gesso it several, several times so that you can make the opacity go down. I hope that makes sense. Um, use your titanium white. Titanium white is stronger than most other kind of whites um, because it has a lot of opaque factors in there. It's supposed to um, cover up what's under, under it. So just keep that in mind in the future. That's a good hack for you to know. Just use one coat of gesso and use a coat or two of white paint to cover things up if you want to cover it up. Dry time, it takes about, I'd give it a good 10 or so minutes. You can also use a hair dryer if you want to dry it more quickly. Um, when you put your hand on it and it doesn't feel cold, and of course it doesn't come back with any of the gesso on it, um, then you know it's ready to move on and you're ready to put, do something else. So today, we're going to talk a little more about portals. We made a portal or a window here last week, and we're going to come back and we're going to play with that in the future, or you can, you can definitely go ahead and play with your pages. But today, I am going to um, show you another hack, and this, I just take a cereal box, and I run it through a die cut machine and cut out all these nice little shapes. I hope you can see those. 